The press conference after what I think you will all agree was an absolutely tremendous Rolex World Cup qualifier. And uh, we have here for this press conference, obviously, Michael Whittaker, pride of place, uh, in the middle there, with to his uh, right, Billy Toomey. And on the extreme right there is is Guillaume York, the uh, course designer. And at the far end, Kevin Stoke to uh, the left of uh, Michael and John Roach from the FBI at the end. Well, obviously, pride of place, we're going to start with you, Michael, because 1993 was when you last won this, uh, I don't, probably don't want to be reminded when you last won it, but today, I mean, that was a terrific jump off. Uh, talk, talk us through that particular part of because it was thrilling to watch. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I could obviously watch uh, Kevin and Billy or John go. Uh, I knew that I couldn't mess about, I had to go, so that's basically, I, I tried to get going from number one. The one patch where it was a little bit slippy, so I just tried to ease him around that one corner. Jump the double and then go as fast as I could to last, you know. And I knew I needed to get a bit of a flyer to the last because I knew I, I was very close, maybe even a little bit behind. So I needed to get a, a real flyer to the last, which I did. Thank, thank God. <laughs> and for you to win it again, I mean, what does it mean to be winning back here at well, it's, Olympia? Yeah, it's brilliant. I haven't had the best year, really. You know, I keep going four faults in a lot of the big Grand Prix. So to actually uh, sort of plan him all week for this class and for it to come off. That was brilliant. And for you, obviously, complicate more the girl in the air, obviously with the suspension. To round it off, though, you can almost put that behind you now. Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, I've got two or three sort of very good horses now, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to next year. And what would be the plan? Will you be looking now to qualify through for Leipzig, or how, how do you see the rest of the winter? Yeah, well, I think I nearly should be qualified. I'm not sure how many points I've got, but I must be near. 35, so you know, another one touch, and I, I should be qualified. So, yeah, I would definitely plan on going. Billy, so close to winning. Uh, the master did you in the end, didn't he? Just, but. Uh, I just it, forgot to tell you one thing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, Billy, obviously so close, but still a terrific performance from you again. Yeah, my mare's been jumping uh, consistently really well for the last sort of 12, 18 months. Um, it was a really hot class. I think um, if you look, the three of us have sort of spared our horses during the week, and I think it's we've all reaped the benefits of today's performance. Uh, they've all been fresh and they've all performed really well. So congratulations to Michael and Kevin. Uh, you know, we were chatting in, on the train on the way back from Paris. He'd sort of been having one down here and there, and they say that uh, form is temporary, but class is permanent. And that's how it is with Michael, so well done to him. Uh, Kevin, so close to winning here, but again, confirming you're nearly, but my goodness me, what do you, yeah, so yeah, close yeah. to winning today. It was a lot of uh, riders in the jump off, normally I'm not so fast with his horse, and uh, because he's booking all the time, and then I tried a bit, uh, okay, but uh, I have no excuse, and uh, Billy and Michael were really faster. Uh, not close to me, nearly more than half a second. So it was the best today, and I'm happy for them. They did. A, it was a really wonderful jump off, and I'm already happy to be third. And you rounding off what has been a wonderful few months and weeks for you as well, because you're obviously on top of the standings, the Rolex standings at the moment. So the form is is looking good. Yeah, yeah I'm really lucky guy because I have a super order. <laughs> I have uh, a few good sponsors and so at the end I have for sure top three Grand Prix horses and then a lot of eight and nine years old are coming behind so it's sure I'm really lucky and I try to enjoy each show I'm doing. You're not giving up that armband easily are you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway now well, again obviously the course designer you saw 16 going through to the jump off did that potentially did that surprise you to see so many go through well i don't uh, build very often here in europe of course i know that the level of competition here is very high but it's funny that i uh, as i saw michael uh, won i i remember that in weg i was assistant course designer and i remember him selling telling me forget about the height of these jumps here and uh, i should have built much a little bit bigger than i had today I think I had a good track and that helped the, the riders to, to get. I was expecting a little bit less clear, but the jump in here is really amazing. 
and uh, in the end we had a nice track for the jump off and I think it was a, a good class. And the jump off couldn't have gone better for you when you get a winner by two hundredths of a second. That is, that's true. The, that, that was definitely. John, your thoughts at the end um, on what, what you've just seen this afternoon? Michael, Billy and Kevin, congratulations. Fantastic sport. Um, before I give you the current standings, I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the FBI to thank Simon and his team and congratulate them once again on organizing a fantastic event in Olympia. Uh, it's a pleasure to come to Olympia. It's really one of the best events in the world. Uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to uh, thank the um, H&M and also Rolex for their support. Without that, all this wouldn't be possible. The current uh, standings are as follows. We have Kevin Stout on 78, he's way ahead of Rolf Gorn Benson on 57. Uh, Meredith Michaels Beerbaum on 50, Billy Toomey on 44, Harry Schmulders on 41, Christian Alman on 40, Rodrigo Pessoa on 36, Michael Whittaker on 35, Carson Otto on 33, Ludger Beerbaum on 31, Marlon Bayer Johnson on 29, Sergio Alvarez Moya on 29 also, Gerke Schroeder on 28, uh, Robert Whittaker on 28, Leon Tyson on 27, Philip Weishaupt on 24, Marco Kutcher on 23, and Lars Niebuhr on 22. And that's at the moment the top 18 as we go into the eight qualifier uh, taking place starting on the 26th of December in Mechelen. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Any questions? If you could just make sure. Can I just ask Michael, um, how do you rate MI after all the Rob Green was this? Yeah, he's, I think he's, uh, he's definitely as good as Avad, if not better. Uh, he's had a, like I said, he, he, he didn't, uh, when we get that suspension, he, he didn't do anything when he was nine. Uh, and I didn't do that much with him when he was eight outdoors. So this year he's had a bit of catching up to do, which by the end of the summer he did. Uh, but he's had quite a few four faults, you know, like, but jumping very well. So I think things like that, you just got to be patient and, you know, and like this week I sort of put all my eggs in one basket with him and it's, it's paid off, you know. No, I don't think it, I think it was more the fact that I'd won. <laughs> like I said, you know, I've had a, I haven't had the best year, uh, you know, uh, winnings now, you know, I've had a lot of four faults, like I said, and, and I've sort of done for this one, and it came off, really. That's, it doesn't often. It's a good place to win. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes, 16 riders in the jump off. Too much, and uh, for those who are behind and with no, no money in the, uh, at the end, I mean, uh, how do you. So I'm quickly for the riders. Yeah. Will you think oh, for me? Oh, yeah. sorry, 16 yeah. through. 16 riders in the jump off. Yeah, I think uh, at this, this show, you know, uh, for some reason, the horses, it's a little bit like Ark and horses, or, or the riders seem to, to jump you know, above the normal standard. I mean, the course was big enough, it was very tricky, of course. It was, it wasn't super scopy, but it was very tricky. And you never, you know, when we riders walk the course, you know, you, ne you never would have said it. I mean, 16 players. I think it's just that horses are really on form and, and you know, they're very good riding. I think Michael's right. I think also, if you notice with the courses, they, there's nothing that's, we say, it's going to burst your horse. No massive, crazy oxers. A lot of. Um, a lot of thought has to go in from the rider with the distances. Uh, I think seven, eight, nine, steady six, short four. Always thinking, thinking about what you have to do, and that's modern day jumping now. Uh, I think it was a really competitive class. I think it was fantastic for the crowd to watch, and um, yeah, I think uh, the best man won probably in the end. <laughs> so there you are. Kevin, your thoughts? Okay, but sure, when I walked the course, I saw maybe eight tiers. Now, uh, I was just speaking with John, the level is so high. 
uh, each Grand Prix you walk the course and you, you think oh, maybe between 5 and 10 clears and at the end you can have 15 slack. Okay, each week we can see that. It's unbelievable. Uh, the level is really, really high and it's really good for the competition. It's really good for everything. But uh, the course designers count um, with higher or more difficult. Otherwise, the horses are jumping two or three uh, weekend a month. And then if you put more difficult, at the end you kill them before the end of the season. So I think it was a fair course. And uh, did Michael want to say something? <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, the last one I did was Stuttgart. And it, it was, I would say, quite a fair bit bigger, but less, uh, less complicated. They got 13 players there. You know, Horses and riders are uh, much better now, like Kevin says, stands much higher. Yeah, just want to add that uh, it's, uh, it's a very fine line between a, a, a fair course and an over-demanding course. And uh, we always try to think what Kevin said, that the, the, the riders have a very busy calendar and uh, we really try to ask just uh, enough for each competition and sometimes that with the, the, the great quality of the horses and the jumping and the good riding, you can have more fears than you would expect. What about the ground? That means it looks like Yes, on the, on the turns, I think it was uh, it, it was maybe a little bit, but the, the riders also, uh, with, uh, there's the, the big issue with the surfaces now, and uh, uh, there are some surfaces now that the riders really don't have to balance the horses to turn. Sometimes they get used to that, and sometimes they their footing that like there's only normal sand, and they're still uh, gonna have to balance a little bit. I think this footing uh, was maybe a little bit if you uh, slippery if you go full speed, full speed, but with the quality of the jump and we have, uh, we can say that it was great footing overall. Oh, just just a small question. I just wanted to know how many of you jump in at Mechelen, and if you're taking the same horses or different ones. I'm not. Christmas with the children. <laughs> Same here. I have no children, so I go to make them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you take the same horse or are you taking a different one? I take um, Prestige and uh, Crack Boom with Jim the World Cup, I think. Really? Any more questions? Well, happy Christmas to one and all. Well, there's one small thing we can do. We have a uh, journalist competition kindly donated by uh, Rolex, and I'm going to get Michael to pre present uh, the person who chose him and has come out of the draw. And there's no bias here. Kelly Smith, the press officer, has won.